so we were not recording. So I will say now again that we are now uh, we started with the uh, um, uh, verbal system in Akkadian, and the first thing we do is learning the G stem. So the G stem is um, um, uh, it gets its letter from the German Grundstamm, and meaning the basic stem. And uh, that's an equivalent. If you look into other Semitic languages, Hebrew, for example, this would be the equivalent of the, uh, um, the Binyan Kal or the Binyan Pa'al, and um, uh, in Arabic, of the first stem out of ten. Right? Uh, they have not. We give numbers. Um, um, uh, um, students and teachers of Arabic give numbers to the stems. We give letters to the stems, and in Hebrew we say pa'al, pl, nifal, etc. Right? Um, the, these are the different names. Good. So we started with the uh, what I call prefix suffix conjugation, but now I saw that the general term is prefix conjugation. I mean, um, we have a prefix suffix conjugation and a suffix conjugation. So um, if people don't write all the time prefix. Um, um, hyphen uh, suffix conjugation, they simply say prefix conjugation, taking for granted that you know that there are suffixes in the prefix conjugation as well. And then the suffix conjugation is only suffixes, it has no prefixes, right? And I said, what is the, uh, the first um, uh, form we learn? There are three different forms in the prefix conjugation in Akkadian, which is a big surprise to you. Because you know from Hebrew that there's only one form uh, in the um, uh, prefix conjugation, and that's what you call the imperfect. You, I mean, students of Hebrew, uh, biblical Hebrew, you call the uh, uh, imperfect, yiktol, right? But we'll see that methods are a little bit uh, more, more, more complicated or, uh, than that. But the yiktol, you say, okay, the yiktol is. Um, to describe actions which will happen, which didn't start yet. And in Akkadian, I told you that uh, the Ipus form, which is the equivalent, um, um, is uh, describing the past, past events. Now, all this in um, with some uh, relative, um, um, it's a relative saying because you know tenses are not really tenses and there are the relations between them and uh, sometimes it it, it, it expresses uh, um, um, different things than the past and we learn all that we will learn the syntax but first we do now the forms right and but you were surprised you say like hey how is it possible Danny was surprised at most I think but he's not here now so he said well, yeah, yeah but that's the future of it. Now, of course, Yiktol is the future, but if you compare Yiktol not, um, if you compare it not to Yiktol future, but to Yiktol inside the form Vay Yiktol, then it is the past. You remember, we talked about the Vav consecutive, right? Vay Yiktol is the, the, one of the two ways to describe past events. One is Katal and the other Vay Yiktol, and Vay Yiktol is even more straightforward. A description of a past, whereas katal is more for a background situation, uh, for a vayiktol um, 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 action described. Yeah, but it's even more than that, even more than that. Okay, and uh, this I would like now to uh, point out to you, especially because, uh, you know, if it would be only for Akkadian, I would say, okay, we, we discussed Ipus shortly, and now let's go on to the next, um, to, to the next form in the prefix conjugation, the, uh, the one with the germination, and then to the third form, the one with the tar infix. But let's wait a little bit with that because it's not very simple. It's not, it's not all said about the uh, Hebrew. And as you learn biblical Hebrew, then you might have heard about what I'm going to say now, but it will now become even more um, um, meaningful. Um, um, the form yiktol, that they are actually a yiktol for the future and another one for the past. Okay, so let me just. <coughs> so listen, we compare our apus, tapus, tapusi, ipus, nipus, tapusa, and ipusu, ipusa. These 
first forms, we, we, which we call preterite and Akkadian, the past, um, even if it's sometimes, as I said, not the past, it could be uh, uh, differently also understood, um, used, but basically that's the past. Then we compare it not to the yiktol here of the future, we compare it to the yiktol in vayiktol, which means something done and the action is ended already, right? Uh, this also action ended, and we speak about that as already a past event, okay? And there is a big difference between yiktol of future in Hebrew and yiktol of uh, vayiktol. I don't know if you learned about that. I'll tell it shortly now, okay? And if not, then you'll probably learn about that in the, in the Hebrew classes. The, we, um, um, the idea is um, of Hebrew scholars, scholars of biblical Hebrew, that this yiktol of the future, the basic, yeah, the, the one you would say yiktol, like in modern Hebrew, yiktol, he will write, um, had an extra vowel here, a short vowel, and it was actually yiktolu. Have you ever heard about that? Did someone ever hear about that? Or is it completely news? Com complete new news for you? What do you say? Speak to me. Speak it's to me. Ani, Ani, I mentioned you and you, I mentioned you. I, I, I was afraid that you will not come. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry, Professor. I, a meeting ran late. I'm so sorry. You not need to be sorry. No, I was afraid that you will not come because I'm referring to what you, you you express surprise that I compare Ipus, the preterite of Akkadian, with Yiktol. And correctly so, Yiktol is the future. Why should I compare um, um, uh, two things which are not connected, right? But then I said, now I just said, okay, we don't compare it with the Yiktol future. We actually compare it with Bayiktol. So you may say, hey, that's a trick. The difference between Yiktol and Bayiktol is only in the Vav. It's not a trick, okay? And then I asked if someone ever heard that the yiktol of the future was a different independent conjugation from the yiktol of vayiktol. Has somebody ever heard about that? If not, then it's worth the, uh, mentioning. Alex, for example, have you heard, don't be shy. Have you ever heard about that? Uh, I understand that they have two different meanings, but the way you said it, I don't think so, that they are two different conjugations. I yeah. didn't hear that. One is short and one is long. One is short and one is long, all right? Is that it? I would love to hear all about it if you want to. Okay, okay, so, but shortly, because we don't learn Hebrew, certainly not Arabic, but I will start with Arabic because that is, that's really clear. About Hebrew, that's mostly reconstructed, although we can substantiate this reconstruction. But in Arabic, we don't need to reconstruct anything, okay? So this is why the table um, in, in this program, okay? I don't say now, you can be a full astrologist without knowing Arabic and Hebrew, that's the problem, okay? But let's say here you learn Hebrew and then uh, Akkadian, maybe one day also Arabic. Um, um, you know, then what happens in, I'll enlarge it a little bit. Uh, what happens is that we have an Arabic. Um, we have an Arabic, a form. Here's the third person masculine, uh, Yafal, which is different from Yafalu. Okay. Yafalu is the present future. Yaf alu is the present future. Ya at the beginning, u at the end, u is suffix, okay? There is another yaf ala, which has some function, and then comes this form, yaf al, a zero at the end, zero at the end, okay? And also the other suffixes are different between the long one and the short one. The, uh, um, this is, for example, taf alina. Taf alina, and it becomes taf ali. So it also gets shortened in a way without the na. Or this is taf aluna, okay? And it becomes taf alu, okay? Which is, of course, um, this u and this u are exactly like this u, and this u is exactly like this u. I mean, they are all combined in all Semitic languages, right? For the third masculine plural, etc. So um, there is a short conjugation, a short form of, of the prefix conjugation in Arabic, and they call it majzum, literally the cut down one, the one which is cut, okay? Meaning that the vowel is here, 
doesn't doesn't appear anymore and forms long forms like ina lena became lee and luna became lu etc okay that's the short form and it has two functions um, um uh, one of them is that if you take the word the little the negation word lam which is not and you add to it the majloom it negates the past it negates the past so whereas yafalu the long form serves as the present future yafal negates the past in the form lam yafal he did not do something and then that's the direct connection to ipus which is he did something in akkadian okay you understand the logic Alex, you understand the logic? Yeah? If not, yes. then you should ask, okay? So there are short forms here, right? Very similar to Akkadian. Taf Ali is like Taprusi. Sorry for the, for the noise, but hopefully this will stop in a second. There is a Ta prefix, of course, for the second person, um, a feminine, and, 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 and a long E at the end, right? Like Hebrew Tichtavi, right? But the present future in Arabic is okay, taktubina, and that's the shorter form. And the shorter form is equal to 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 what we learn here, taposi. And here we have an Arabic tafalu, tafalu, tafalu with an u vowel. And suddenly the this short form tafal. Which is equal to ipus zero ending in 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 um, um, or here okay ya and e zero ending here the third masculine singular zero ending in both Arabic and in in um, Akkadian okay so we connect or we have to compare the Akkadian preterite its forms its prefixes and suffixes not to the imperfect in Arabic, right, or the present future, but to the majzum, which looks all the same, but for the ending, which is shorter, shortened, instead of yafalu, yafal, instead of tafaluna, tafalu, it's shortened, okay, and the same, it is, scholars uh, of biblical Hebrew say, was in Hebrew as well, there was a yiktolu form, okay? And of course, short vowels at the end became zero, right? This is why we don't have in the noun case endings, etc. right? So yiktolu became yiktol, tiktolu became tiktol, and then the imperfect form now, okay, looks, which was yiktolu, looks exactly like the short form, which was short from the outset and served as the past if connected to vav consecutive wow consecutive right this you know vaikhtov is he wrote right so there were two conjugations now you cannot see you, you you can believe that this was the situation but you can also ask for proof that this in hebrew was the situation right and the proof is not in the strong verb in the sound bird. The proof lies in specific points in the in the in the paradigm. Okay. So the best book to check these things is Joshua Blau's book. Have you heard about that book book already? All right, listen, listen, we need to finish. Um, uh, I will uh, send you, I will upload this one uh, uh, document, right? It is called, it is called, it is called uh, sound verbs in the G stem. Uh, uh, here's the date, 24 December 2020, right? And then of course, next time we will have uh, an updated one, then you'll throw away the older version, all right? There are some holes and still there, but, um, but, but still most, 
lots of material already there. So you can re rehearse it. I would say rehearse it, uh, read it carefully, um, and uh, try a little bit to learn by heart, okay? Like apus tapus tapus ipus nipus tapus ipus ipus then a paras taparas taparas iparas niparas taparas iparas iparas aptaras taptaras taptaras tap taptarsi iptaras niptaras taptarsa iptarsa iptarsa then take another one of the you know adagal tadagal etc take another one like agdamar tagdamar etc zeu 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 okay I know that's Christmas so no homework but 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 you can still, um, uh, even in Christmas, learn a few forms by heart. Right? Seda? And we'll finish all that on Monday. And then we'll do exercise number three. You'll get exercise number three in couplets. But if you want, you can look into that already. Exercise of lesson number three, the first exercise. Okay? That will be the next uh, mission. On Monday, we will get it. But you, if you want to to look ahead, then why not?